video is brought to you by Blessed Be God Boutique, maker of Catholic fashionable apparel, handmade accessories, and more. Francis, in his infinite wisdom and charity, just made a critical announcement. He is taking critical action that is desperately needed in our time on the topic that there is no greater need to address. Yes, Francis is finally doing what everyone has asked him to do. He's writing a sequel to his landmark encyclical, Laudato Si, which tackled questions of all things green about what he calls care for our common home. It's rare when a papal encyclical earns a sitting pope the adulation of the world and the secular rulers, especially in this age of increasing opposition to the Catholic faith, but Francis routinely gets praise from the princes of this world for his work on that issue. That by itself, by the way, should give everyone pause, since these are the same people, often promoting the most absolutely evil policies and values imaginable. But yes, your prayers have been answered. Francis is writing a sequel to an encyclical that no one asked for, and like Laudato Si itself, the laity will mostly ignore it. Yes, some will celebrate it. We can expect the clown show over at National Catholic Reporter and their like-minded clowns at America Magazine to celebrate this. We can expect the Catholic Internet Magisterium, who claims that if you reject Laudato Si, then you're not Catholic anymore, to celebrate this document. But in reality, most Catholics will simply ignore it. Francis chose to make this announcement in an odd place. He made it to a group of legal scholars and lawmakers of the European Union. The story comes from Vatican News, which is sort of like the NPR or BBC of Vatican City. They provide this rather boring headline. Pope Francis to European lawyers. Be at service of truth and justice. In his address to a delegation of attorneys from the Council of Europe member countries, Pope Francis encourages lawyers to uphold the rule of law and recall that every person has both rights and duties in relation to society. His announcement was made in an offhanded way to these legal experts, and it sort of ignited a firestorm of responses online. But here's his announcement, quote, The Pope also recognized the commitments related to conserving the earth, our common home, and the willingness to work for the development of a normative framework aimed at protecting the environment. I'm working on a second part of Laudato Si to update the current to update the current issues he added. Pope Francis encouraged European lawyers to persevere in the exercise of their profession, directed to the service of truth and justice needed for the advancement of peace in the world and harmony in our society. The Holy Father concluded his address by entrusting the delegation to the protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary and Saint Yves, patron of lawyers. End quote. It's a key term he used there, and that term is normative framework, which is the kind of language used by academics in the ivory tower and by career politicians. The phrase can be understood in everyday language to mean laws for all things green, basically. Francis is going to write a long, wordy encyclical on establishing a legal framework to tackle the Laudato C issue. This isn't good news at all because Francis will be continuing to provide aid to, to those that popes from a century ago warned us about. See, a few weeks ago on a Saturday, I provided an encyclical by Pope Benedict XV on the topic of those pushing for what he called a world republic. His predecessors warned about this too. Benedict XV was writing during World War I, and he saw the writing on the wall with the launch of the League of Nations. Now, Francis is doing the work of those Benedict XV warned us about more than a century ago, and many Catholics will cheer for it because they've replaced their faith with politics. Francis is literally helping build the infrastructure of the beast that the Antichrist will someday use, according to the Apocalypse of St. John, or the Book of Revelation, as Protestant Bibles call it. Francis's excuse for taking on a second green encyclical is framed in the way that politicians usually do when promoting some kind of the worst policies and laws imaginable. So from another article on this from Vatican News, we get this headline. Pope Francis writing a second part of Laudato Si. The director of the Holy See press office says the second part of the Laudato Si encyclical letter, which Pope Francis mentioned on Monday, will focus on the recent thermometer problems. His excuse is that tired old line, by the way, of, won't someone think about the kids? It's a favorite line of politicians and policymakers when advocating for more power than they have any reason to need. Now, predictably, he is taking advantage of the recent headlines 
to help push the program of his allies. Quote, Speaking off the cuff to a delegation of lawyers from member countries of the Council of Europe on Monday, Pope Francis said he was writing a second part of his Laudato Si encyclical to update it to current issues. The Pope was expressing his appreciation for the attorney's commitment to developing a legal framework aimed at protecting creation. <laughs> we must never forget that the younger generations have the right to receive a beautiful and livable world from us, and that this implies that we have a grave responsibility towards creation, which we have received from the generous hands of God, said the Pope. Thank you for your contribution. In a statement later on Monday, the Director of the Holy See Press Office, Matteo Bruni, explained that the new updated version of Laudato Si will focus in particular on the most recent events affecting people across five continents. End quote. There's nothing quite like having the man the world thinks is Pope hand the faithful over to the servants of the Lord of the world to help promote their rather unpopular ideas. Now, the reactions to this, though, at least on Twitter, were what you would probably expect. The crowd that conflates the faith with their politics and the politics of our rulers are cheering for this, while regular Catholics are asking for God for an end to this alleged papacy, and noting that this document and the ideas he promotes are going to harm the poor, with one commenter dubbing the encyclical Pacamama's Revenge, while others have pointed out that this document will be as binding on you as Laudato Si, which is to say, not binding at all. And all of that's correct, but this makes a story I saw earlier this week make more sense. Liberation theology is back in the news. See, when Laudato C first was released, that condemned ideology suddenly made a resurgence, and his vocal supporters from South America were prominent at future church synods, like the Pan-Amazon Synod, which gave us the closest thing to a liberation theology encyclical, Fratelli Tutti. And yes, the Vatican condemned the errors of liberation theology back in the 1970s and 1980s, not that proponents of that theology seem to care now. One of the biggest voices in the world of liberation theology credits, not in a good way, <laughs> liberation theology itself more than any other effect with the decline of Catholicism in South America. Because as it turns out, when you conflate the faith with secular politics, you drive people out of the church. From Catholic News Agency, we get this headline. Former liberation theologian says movement-fueled decline of Catholicism in Brazil. Laudato Si and liberation theology are, uh, in fact, inseparably linked. You can't have that encyclical without first having that political movement from South America in the preceding half century or so, a movement where priests were turned into activists, some of them taking up arms, and all of them ignoring demands from Rome to stop their activities. Now we get the fruits of their labors. From the article, Quote, the long dominance of liberation theology is at the root of the decline of Catholicism in Brazil, according to Friar Clodovis Boff. In 2007, the religious was an important theologian of liberation theology, although not as famous as his brother Leonardo, a former Catholic priest who is one of the founders of the movement, which gained popularity in the 1970s and emphasized freedom from poverty and oppression as the key to salvation. Then, in a move that alienated him from his famous brother, Clodovis Boff published the article Liberation Theology and Return to Fundamentals, in which he accused liberation theologians of making the poor the center of theology instead of Jesus Christ. Now, Boff has written a book calling for a recentering of the Latin American Catholic Church in Christ. It is necessary for the Church to once again emphasize Christ as priest, as master and lord, and not just the fight against poverty and the Laudato Si topic, he said at the launch of the book, The Crisis in the Catholic Church and Liberation Theology, written in collaboration with Father Leonardo Rosera and recently released by Ecclesiae. These are important questions, but without drinking from the Lord, who is the source, everything dries up, everything dies, Boff said. In the late 1960s, when liberation theology began its long dominion of religious thought in Brazil, more than 90% of Brazilians were Catholics. Since then, the percentage of Catholics in the Brazilian population has decreased and now stands at 51%. Moreover, Brazilian Catholics have a very low rate of church attendance. A survey conducted by Georgetown University's Center for Applied Research in the Apostolate 
CARA, in 36 countries last year showed that only 8% of Brazilian Catholics go to Mass on Sunday. The rate was the third lowest among analyzed countries. For Boff and Rosera, the decline in church attendance is due to the deposit of faith not being passed on. With liberation theology, faith is instrumentalized in terms of the poor, Boff writes in the book. One falls into utilitarianism or functionalism in relation to the word of God and to the theology in general, he continues. He says liberation theology appeals to ideas such as margins of gratuity and eschatological reserve to assert its respect for the transcendence of faith. In fact, the part of transcendence is, in fact, theology, the smallest and least relevant part, the lion's share falling, as always, to the liberating reading of faith. According to the friar, this is leading many Catholics to Protestantism, esotericism, neo-paganism, and even Satanism. End quote. That's brutal. But that is the fruit of this theology, and France it made it, Francis made it mainstream with Laudato Si and, and with Fratelli Tutti. And if you've read the documents and the writings of, Le, of Leonard Boff, you know it to be true. And now we're getting a sequel no one wanted. No one except for the secular powers who stand to gain from a document like this. Now, are you surprised, though, that this is coming? That Francis is writing either an extension to Laudato Si or a second Laudato Si document? Are you that surprised by this? I'm not, especially not after the year we've been having. But at least he's not going after the traditional mass today. <laughs> Let me know what you thought of this in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't, it does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps a lot too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.